What's up everybody? This week's lecture is on relational dialectics. When we talk about relational dialectics, we're going to be talking about your relationships. We're going to be talking about specifically your intimate relationships. And although this theory transcends into other relationships, today I really want you to focus on intimate relationships. And if you haven't been in an intimate relationship, it, it does transcend so you can think about another one. But if you have been in an intimate relationship, I want you to think about that partner as we talk about these things. So what this theory suggests is that there's certain tensions that exist in every relationship that we have to address in order to be successful. I would define relational dialectics as the dichotomous tensions that exist in relationships that must be resolved through communication. So what does that mean? When we say a dichotomous tension, what that means is, is that something can be either or. So we have to look at it in terms of polar opposites. It's either good or bad. It's either black or white, happy or sad. So if we look at the like color spectrum, let's say, something can exist as being black or white if those are considered opposites, then we see that there's shades of gray that exist in between. So what we're saying here is that in a relationship, you have these dichotomous tensions that something can be either or, but in reality, most people meet somewhere in between. So what I'm going to show you is a diagram that outlines three of what are considered the most important dialectical tensions. Now this varies across who's talking about it and so forth, but to me these are the three most important ones that I want you to know. So take a look at this chart, write it down, take a picture of it, but you need to have this. Alright, so let me walk you through it. First in the top left corner we have dialectical tensions. So what's listed underneath that is the three dialectical tensions. If we move over one we can see that it says dyad. So that would be the next column, dyad and public would be the next column. All right. So first, let's go down to number one where it says integration separation. So this is the first type of tension that I want you to know about. When we're talking about integration separation, we're talking about how much time you're together and how much time you're apart. Now, as we can see, in any relationship, you have to decide how often you're together and how often you're apart. Therefore, it's a dichotomous tension. You have no choice. You have to figure out how much you're together and how much you're apart. There's no other option outside of that. In order to come to a consensus, you have to have communication. So in order to figure out how much time we spend together and how much time we spend apart, we need to come to some kind of conclusion. Now sometimes this happens naturally, but it's still through communication that we figure out where we meet in order to be comfortable with each other. So we can see where dyad and the tension meet, it says connection and autonomy. So when we say the tension that exists in a dyad, think of it as the tension in your privacy of your own home. If we move over one more where it says dyad in public, that's the tension as to how it exists when you as a unit are in public. So let me walk you through it. So integration and separation, how much you're together and how much you're apart, in the privacy of your own home is connection and autonomy. So for example, let's say you just want to sit on the couch by yourself, you want to read a book, you want to be left alone. That would be autonomy. But your partner wants to hang out. They want to have a long conversation. They want, they want that all the time. That's connection. So as we can see here, these are two opposites. So in the privacy of your own home, you have to figure out how often you're allowed to be by yourself and how often you're allowed to be together. You have to figure out these two things in order to move on with your relationship, otherwise there's always going to be a tension, right? So if one person really wants to be by themselves and they end up staying in the bedroom all the time, whereas the other person constantly is trying to be connected with their partner, it won't work out. So therefore, there will have to be communication to come to terms with what works best for both of you, a compromise. So let's move on to the next one when we say inclusion seclusion. So when we're talking about a dyad in public, we're saying we need to figure out how much us as a unit in public are together and how much we're apart. What this means is that for a couple that wants to be included all the time, that means that at a party they're the ones that are interacting with everybody and they're together doing it the whole time. Couples that like to be secluded, they're the ones that are at the party, they're all the way in the corner, and they don't like talking to anybody. We can see the difference here. Now the reason why this is a tension is because when you as a couple enter a party, you need to figure out how much you're connected with everybody and how much you're not. So therefore, figuring out the amount of inclusion, the amount of seclusion that you have as a unit in public is important. Otherwise, there's going to be a tension that exists. So let's move to the next one, number two, stability and change. So stability and change is how much things stay the same and how much they change. So let's take this tension and move it into the privacy of your own home. This is where we go to predictability and novelty. 
So in terms of the privacy of your own home, an example would be something that's predictable would be that every Friday we have pizza. If every single Friday in your relationship that when you come home there's pizza on the table and that's just what you do, that'd be something that's very predictable. I want that every single time. Now novelty would be is that I want something different every single day. I don't care what it is, I want something different. If that's the case, you would want more novelty. So as we can see, it's important to come to some kind of consensus about this tension because if one person wants the same thing every time and the other person wants something different every time, you have to have some kind of compromise. It has to be resolved in some way. So if we move to the next one, if we're talking about stability change in the public sphere, if we're talking about you two in public, we're talking about conventionality and uniqueness. So if you two do something conventional in public, if we're talking about going to get something to eat, a conventional place to eat would be like Applebee's or or we're talking about going to Burger King, and we're talking and going about Dunkin' Donuts in the morning. So if we're talking about something unique, if we're talking about going out to eat, right? we're talking about in public, we're going to go to this spot that, I, that has a door but doesn't really have a sign on it, but I don't really know what it is. It's a unique spot, right? So we can see we have convention, conventional versus unique in the public sphere. That's the key part here is that what separates this is that whether you're in public or not. So then finally, the third dialectical tension in the bottom left is expression and privacy. Expression and privacy refers to how much you reveal and how much you don't reveal. So we're talking about that in terms of the privacy of your own home. This is how much information you reveal about your day, let's say. So you come home from work and you tell your partner everything. You talk about how you felt that day, the sandwich you ate, how many times you went to the bathroom. You tell them everything. This would be considered extreme openness. Now, if he was closeness, you would walk in the door, your partner would say, how was work, and you would just give him a nod and you keep it moving. That would be complete closeness. So as you can see, this is just between you two. It's only between you and your partner and the privacy of your own home. If we talk about this tension in the public sphere, what we're talking about is revelation and concealment in the bottom right-hand corner. Now, between the two of you, you're going to have private information. And what this refers to is how much you tell people in public and how much you don't tell people in public. If you were one to be full in revelation, if you were on the full left side of the dichotomy, you would tell everybody in public everything about the two of you. So for example, oh, last night so-and-so did this, and you would have never believed it. You would tell them everything. If you're on the other side, if you're on concealment, you would never tell anybody in public anything about your two, your, you and your partner's private information. We can see how this becomes a really important part in a relationship when we're talking about things such as infertility. So like I said, there's a lot more parts to this uh, that, are, that are talked about um, in communication studies, but these three are, the very, are very important uh, to really getting a grasp on your own relationship. So what I'd like you to do is really think about these pieces in terms of a successful relationship you've had and an unsuccessful relationship you've had. So in the successful one, they should match up relatively close. And if they didn't, at some point, your preference for connection autonomy would have had to have been negotiated with your partner in order to come to, to a compromise so that you feel comfortable. Now another thing I'd like you to do is take a look at your unsuccessful relationship and see how much those two pieces didn't match up. So for example if you go and look at an ex or a former best friend you'll come to find that one of these things was way off and you never resolved it. So if you have any questions about this let me know but try to put each piece together and, uh, and work through it.